hello, hello, and good morning, and welcome to the Transformation Tuesday morning devotion, where I believe where we hear the word of God, we put action to it, and we see transformation in our lives. Um, I'm so excited about this morning's conversation um, as we continue a conversation that we have been having talking about Heal Me. Today, I believe it is part six of this beautiful conversation that we've been talking about in this time of devotion that we have been digging and spinning in time inside of the word of God. Um, and so today we're going to continue that conversation, uh, continue um, again on part six. We're going to continue looking into the book of John, John chapter nine. We have been using as in some form of a template uh, the uh, this man, the man that is that the scripture shows and references that he was born blind. And so um, in this context of scripture, it's, it has been allowing us to be able to use as this template, it has been allowing us to be able to say and to use his lifestyle or his life as a template of showing us how not only do we become healed, but it shows us how that in this process of being healed, how it looks. Now, one of the things that we've been dealing with is we've been dealing with this context of showing that, that the healing that we are looking for or the healing that we're looking at is not physical. We're looking at the emotional healing. And I believe that through this process that we have been gaining the wisdom um, that we need to be able to get the emotional healing that is needed for our future. Um, and so for those that have not been watching or you hit, this is your first time uh, hearing about this conversation, I want you to go back. Again, this is part six. So we've been diving into this conversation. So let's go ahead and read the scripture context that we're going to use today, which is John chapter nine, we're going to start on verses eight. We're only going to read two verses of scripture, verses eight and nine, and then we'll go into today's topic or today's conversation. So it says, the neighbors, therefore, and they which before had seen him that he was blind, said, is not this he that sat and begged. Verse 9, some said, this is he, and others said, he is like him, but he said, I am he. One of the things that I want us to be able to recognize is that through this part of this process of healing, this part right here is very important. It's very important because of this. Sometimes what ends up happening is after we get healed, we don't sometimes, we, we are, our focus of being healed is important. Um, our focus of being healed is important. But one of the things that we have to realize is after the process of being healed, there is something that ends up happening that is important. What is that? Well, in this storyline, what we see is basically one of the things that ends up happening in our own personal lives is that is that really, and we have to be honest with ourselves, is when you and I accepted the context that we wanted to be healed and we wanted this change to happen in our lives, those around us, all everyone around us did not accept the same challenge did not accept the same form of saying, I want you to be healed. And, and what ends up happening is just like this storyline, this blind man was now healed, which changed, which we talked about this on last time, which changed the place that he was in. And because of that, there was a response to those that were used to seeing him in that state or in that position. And their response was, hey, man, what, this can't be the same dude. Like, why, what, where is this change? Why did he change? He looks the same, but where is the beggar? 
He 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 looks the same, but where's the blind man? There's there's something that has changed. And if you continue to read throughout this chapter, what you'll realize is they were frustrated that he was healed. Not and and they used the context that they were mad that he was healed on the Sabbath. But the reality of what you see is they were frustrated that he was healed. So what that helps me to understand is that we have we have changed, we have made the decision to change, but those around us have not had not made the same decision to accept your change. And so sometimes what ends up happening is when we become healed, truly when we're talking about emotional, when we're talking about our emotional healing, sometimes when we be start becoming emotionally healed, there are two categories of people that we're about to read again. There are two categories of people that we have to be prepared to be able to give this answer to. So let's read it again. Again, in John chapter 9, verses 8 and 9, this is what it says again. It says, the neighbors, therefore, and they which before had seen him that he was blind, said, is not this he that sat? and begged. Some said, this is he. The others said, he is like him. Okay. So again, we have two groups of people. We have the neighbors and they that seen him. Now, who are the neighbors? Let's break this down. We got a few minutes um, and then I'll be done. Let's break this down. Who are the neighbors? The neighbors are those that have been right by you those that have uh, walked with you or, or are close to you before you were healed. So those are the ones that saw your scars. Those are the ones that saw your um, emotional expressions because of your pain. Those are the ones that were around you through the process. You know, the ones that you told about how hurt you was or the ones that kind of recognized or known you long enough to know that you've been hurt because of the responses or how you dealt with situations or whatever that might have been. Those that have been walking with you that have recognized or saw things in your life, those are considered in in this context of what we're talking about today, um, those are considered as your neighbors, the ones that seen the, the details of your life on a regular basis. All right. So now we're going to look at the second category of people. They that seen him before. Now, these are the people in the storyline. These are the people that saw him when they would go into the temple. These are the people that would see him when he was in the posture of begging. So in our category of life, these are the people that only rec only see us when we go to the barbershop or only see us when we go to church or um, only see us when we're at work or um, only see us when we are going to wherever your favorite shopping place is or your favorite hotspot is. These are those people that, you know, that they see you on, on, on some form of regular basis. They have gotten a chance to be able to get to know you, but they don't walk with you. They, they don't cheer with you on a regular, so they don't really know you in detail, but they do know, they do know that there's, when they see you, they know something about you. They can, they recognize something consistent about you. And this is the scenario here. They recognize that there was something consistent about him. He was consistently a beggar. He was consistently a blind man. That was consistent. Now, both of those scenarios have changed. And now because of their ch this change, they start having an issue with the problem. But here is the resolve. I, I, I love this. And I couldn't, uh, as I was going back through, I was, I was studying this last night and going back through this last night, I got excited all over again. Because here is the resolve. They were struggling with his change that he decided to be changed with. Jesus said Jesus came and Jesus touched him and and he and in this process he 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 decided made a decision to be able to change by being obedient to the instructions of God just like within us we decide 
to be obedient in the change, be obedient to whatever God instructs us to do for our change, for our healing to happen. But here is his response to the questions. Here's his response to those around him. Here's the response that I'm excited about. I'm so excited. I can't even sit still. Here's the response in verses nine, John chapter nine, verses nine. This is what it says. Some said, this is he. And others said, he is like him. But he said, this is his response. I am he. Now, I know you you probably not. you probably like, okay, Hiram, you got to explain that. What do you mean by how are you excited about that response? Understand what he's saying. Their, their problem in verses eight and nine is they're asking themselves this question. Hey, where's the, is this the man that used to be a beggar? Is this the man that used to be blind? He kind of looked like him, but I'm not for sure. He, he, he kind of, he kind of resembles the same guy, but but he looks a little bit happier. He can actually see. He's his clothes and changed. You, something about him has changed. Is this the same man? And he says, "I am he." What does that mean? He's saying, "Yes, that's who I used to be. Yes, I'm the man that used to be blind. I'm the man that used to be a beggar." I'm the man that used to be in that state. I'm the person that used to be hurt by that. Yes, I'm the I'm the same exact person. But I am he also that is that is that is able to see. I am also healed. I am also changed. So yes, I am he that used to be that, but I am he that is this right now. So I am he that used to be hurt. I am he, I am the person that used to be in bondage. Yes, I am the person that used to be blind. Yes, I'm the person that used to be a blegger. But guess what? I'm not him, that person anymore, because now I'm healed. And this excites me. This excites me because when we decide to be healed, again, we have to remember this. When we decided to be healed, some of us, some of those around us will or might have a problem with our healing, but we have to make the decision. This is our action point. We have to make a decision. <laughs> I was hurt, but now I deserve to be healed for God's glory. I I'm going to say it again. I was hurt hurt. I was in pain. I was having this personal, emotional um, um, problem inside. I was going through that. I was. That was me. But now I have decided. I've made a decision. This is my decision. My decision is I deserve to be healed. I went through too much. I, I stayed there too long. I've been in pain too many. I, I was in that state too long. And now I deserve this healing. I want to be for God's glory. Yes, I deserve to be healed for the glory of God, for what God wants to do through my life. I This is what I deserved. This is a part of what God said I deserved. This is what he wanted for me. Is this healing? He doesn't want me to continue to be in the place that I used to be. So I deserve this. This is what he gave to me is my healing. So his response has to be our response. I am that person. Yes, I used to be hurt. Yes, I used to be in that situation. Yes. I used to be there, but also, yes, I am healed. I am no longer that person. I'm no longer that person. And I don't feel bad that I'm no longer that person. I have decided to accept this context that God asked me to be healed. I deserve to be healed for his glory.
So this is our prayer, and then I'm done. This is our prayer for this morning. God, I thank you for healing me. And now, using me, using my healing to impact others for your glory. I'm going I'm to I'm say this again. God, I thank you for healing me. And now using my healing to impact others for your glory. Go walk in your healing today. And remember that after you become healed and you're constantly being healed in different areas of your life, there will be people and those around you that don't understand your change. They didn't sign up for the change in your life. And they'll start, they'll start asking questions and making statements and doing different things. Girl, please, you ain't healed. You can't be you. Hey man, no, nah, for real, man. You man, you remember when they did that to you? I know you still mad. You, you, you have to go to this place and your mind and in your heart. Yeah, that used to be me. Got to be honest. That used to be me. I used to be mad at that. I used to be hurt by that. I used to get offended by those things. Yep. I used to feel uncomfortable when they walked in the room. I, I did. I, I used to. I used to. That used to be me. But I am he now that is healed today. And I have decided for God's glory, God asked me to be this. You know what? I deserve it because God don't want me to be broken no more. God don't want me to be in pain no more. God don't want me to sit in that place no more. How do I know this? Because that's why he placed this on my heart to share this with us this morning to go through this conversation because God is saying, I need you to be healed for your future. But I also want you to understand that after you become healed, those that are around you, your neighbors, those that see you on a regular basis as you're walking and doing what you normally would do, sometimes they won't understand. But it's okay. Because our prayer this morning is, God, I thank you that you healed me. And now you're using my healing for your glory. Love you all, family. Talk with y'all next time right here on Transformation Tuesday Morning Devotion. I got some new things that's coming. So you want to make sure that you stay a part of these conversations and don't miss a thing. I love you all. Talk with y'all later. Bye-bye.